to Crisis Management Television, CMTV. I would like to introduce you to the first of many programmes and also to Jeff Williams, CEO and founder of 3CI Global and CMTV. Hi Jeff. Hi Rebecca, how are you doing all right? Very well, thank Good. you. So tell us Jeff, why the need for CMTV? Uh, well, what we found was, we did research into this, we we experts in crisis management and disaster management and we found that a lot of industries and government organisations were struggling to find the best practices that were being uh, used around the world and we needed a, a, a platform that we could put them out and CMTV seemed a logical way to do it. Internet protocol television, accessible to anybody anywhere. Welcome back CMTV viewers. Uh, I'm pleased to say I've got with me today Rhys Griffiths and he's been researching recently the Canadian rail uh, explosion that happened in Lech Megentic in Canada and I hope I've pronounced that right. That's how we pronounced it over in Europe. Uh, welcome Rhys, nice to see Hello, you Jeff. again. Rhys, th this tragic accident, we know that it's still under investigation mm -hmm. and we know there's lessons that will come mm -hmm. out in the uh, inquiry that goes yeah. into it. But could you give the viewers an oversight of what you found out about it and what we could make some assumptions perhaps of the way that uh, it's going to develop and increase safety in the future? Okay, Jeff, yes. Um, just a few facts about the incident itself. This incident was uh, a runaway train oh. um, that hit uh, the small town of Lamagantic at about uh, quarter past one in the morning on the 6th of July, 2013. Uh, the train derailed, it was carrying crude oil. It was actually carrying 72 uh, tank cars, each with about wow. 25,000 gallons. <coughs> That's a lot. That, 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 of you know, as, as ex-firefighters, we know that is a lot of hazardous material and very large risk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the derailment um, caused the uh, a lot of the tank cars uh, to explode, and there's lessons there uh, that are under investigation in terms of um, the robustness of the tank cars and can they withstand mm -hmm. uh, uh, derailments. And um, unfortunately, it devastated all of downtown that megantic uh, and cost. Uh, it, many it's lives. an interesting point you say that about now looking at the safety of these uh, tankers, mm -hmm. because as you know, and I'm sure some of our viewers are aware that where we have nuclear waste that's being carried mm -hmm. up and down, those tanks have to be specifically made to mm -hmm. withstand very severe mm -hmm. derailments and uh, you know impacts. Absolutely, yeah. And, and in Canada, there is a new standard of uh, tank cars. But unfortunately, the old standard of tank cars with the thinner shells are still in operation. Yeah. And it would, uh, and it's alleged that the tank cars in this particular incident were the old CTC 111 tanks, which had the thinner shells, I not, see. not the current standards that were introduced two years ago. Well, I think it's important at this uh, juncture that we do express our deepest sympathy to, um, to all the relatives and friends that were tragically lost in this from everybody at CMTV. But Rhys, just, just moving on from that point then, we knew that the that we it was reported that there was a, an incident a short while before where the local fire department attended. There was, shortly before midnight, um, a local resident in Nantes, which is about um, 11 kilometres, say six, seven miles uh, up the track, up a gradient from uh, where the uh, derailment occurred, uh, a local resident in Nantes, uh, reported a fire in one of the locals. The local fire department um, attended that incident, quickly extinguished the fire. Uh, the police were there too, and also representatives from the rail authority. And um, the train was declared safe, uh, but ap and everyone left the scene. But after that, obviously, the train wasn't safe because yeah. it started to roll down the hill, gradually gathering momentum. And it actually hit uh, the town, uh, doing roughly 100 kilometers an hour that's about 60 miles an hour wow and the bend where the derailment occurred there was a, a speed restriction of only um 16 miles an hour 16 so, kilometers an so, hour so, 10 you, miles an so hour. you had uh, all this uh these thousands of gallons of fuel belting mm. down a hill hitting a track that was 10 kilometers and it was doing 60 uh, sorry uh, 100 kilometres. Yeah. It had no chance really, did it? Yeah, it, had it was no going chance. to come off. Yeah. It was going to come off. Can I ask you then, Reese, on this? I know that, as we've said, it's, it's, it's ongoing this. 
But the lessons that come out immediately from what we've seen, what would you say are the main lessons? For example, one of the things on the PR issues that you've been looking mm -hmm. into, what, would you think that was handled correctly? or? Um, it doesn't appear so, uh, to be honest, Jeff. Um, after the first um, incident shortly before midnight when the, uh, uh, the original fire was extinguished up, up in Nantes, um, it is alleged that the fire department shut down the locals as per their operational protocols mm. um, and um, the railway uh, company owner from MMA uh, appointed blame, if you like, to the fire yeah. department saying there had been some sort of, sort of sabotage or somebody shut down the engines and this caused mm. the brakes to fail. The brakes to fail. Manual brakes should have been applied, so there's a, that's one of the things the investigators are, learned, uh, are investigating as to whether sufficient manual brakes were applied. So, so what I think the, the first lesson we'd say on, on PR fingers. is, yeah, don't make, don't be hasty in these. Mm. Stand back and a good PR. And if that gentleman wants to speak about public relations, we'd be more than delighted to help him on that one. That's mm. for sure for the future. So just summarising then where we've got up to at the moment is Reese. We we know that this investigation is still going. Um, the key issues it raises is communities, the alarms in communities, how we raise Absolutely. that. Absolutely. There are uh, rail systems in place that will um, alert uh, the authorities that a runaway train hmm. is uh, going down the track or that trains are speeding, if, even if they have got drivers on them. This, this uh, uh, train did not have a driver with them at the time. So um, there are systems, but the, those systems weren't there in this particular incident. And, and how do and, and there's no means of uh, informing the public that there's nobody something knew this train was coming. Yeah, nobody so it, knew so this it train raises was that, doesn't it? Absolutely. About the alarms. Yeah. Well, that's really good that Reese, because that raises into our next short clip. I was in Fort Langley, uh, in Canada, and I spoke to the Canadian public. Yes, Fort Langley is very similar to Lake McGuinty. It had big railway right through the centre of a heavily populated town, a tourist town as that. And I asked the public what they felt about what warning systems, if alarms were sounded, would they know what to do? And this clip will show you what they said. Here we are in Fort Langley in Canada, which is quite apt really when we consider that quite recently in Lac Mahantic there's been a terrible train crash. Fort Langley is a lovely place, it's a tourist place. As you can see behind me, on a weekend people come here, packs of thousands of people enjoying the beautiful bars and restaurants in this area. But there's one key here, all these businesses are like many businesses around the world in that their major trains run straight through the centre. In Lake Magentic, there was a terrible explosion. Here, these businesses round about us, I wonder how many of them have got continuity plans in place for if something goes wrong. We're going to be asking people what they think about the safety of their families when they're at places such as this with a major train coming straight through the centre of the town. You're Canadian, aren't you? I am, yes. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the tragic accident that happened in La Mantique? Well, I think it's exactly like you said, it is very tragic. Yeah. yeah. What, the, what the government is uh, now talking about, one of the things that they're looking at, is to make alarms in key places like this, that if uh, an alarm sounds, people would know what to do. Mm -hmm. How would you feel about that? Well, I think if the people knew what, as long as they know what the alarm means, then, then it would probably would be a good idea. Yeah, the problem is for people that are tourists that are coming in. Right. How would you, have you any ideas of what you think we should be looking at to educate people who live in these areas where trains uh, pass through? Uh, it would be very difficult for them to know. Yeah. 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 Um, I think we have too many sirens already. We've got fire trucks and ambulances and people often just ignore them. Yeah, so, good point. Yeah, and look at White Rock, that lady that got killed by the train because she was listening to her earphones, yeah. and the white rock trains come really quickly. Yeah. And people so, who are hard of hearing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Very good points. Yeah. If, if we looked at, say, the businesses around here, if as a, a straw poll, if we did a straw poll, how many would you think would have continuity plans to carry on their businesses in the event of, say, a major derailment in this area? Oh, I think that life would go on as, as usual. Do you think as people living out with of Fort Langley, that uh, members of the public may should have some form of awareness when they're in these vicinities. I think so. Yeah. Children too. I mean. Children too. Yeah, we could yeah, get it into could the be school. School. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
What are your opinions on the safety of areas like this, where we've got lots of tourists, uh, lots of locals as well, where we've got major railways coming through with high volatile chemicals on some of them? Um, I, it's not something I'm overly concerned about. Well, there you see it for yourself. That was the, you know, just speaking to people, mm. uh, the public in Fort Langley, which is very similar to Lechmagenti. Mm. I think the point for me out of that that came was where the ladies talked about the alarms, how they not mm. people wouldn't take notice of a, a siren. Yeah, it's interesting views, Jeff, and education is the key here, isn't it? To educate people how to uh, recognise alarms and respond appropriately. Mm. And like all education, the best way to tackle that is to get in early. Yeah, get you're probably schools. right. I think we've got to look at a standard and get it into the schools. Mm. Well, thanks very much for that, Reese, and we'll keep viewers, we'll keep you informed on that. And I'll pass now back to you, Rebecca. Thanks very much. That was a great interview there and I think everyone can agree that it was a tragic incident that happened in Quebec. I think something that we need to learn from that though is the train lines going through Quebec with crude oil is actually on the increase. In 2009 it was expected 500 carloads of crude oil went through the country and only four years later they're estimating 140,000 carloads of crude oil. So this risk is just getting greater. We need to learn from it, we need to move on and just hope that it doesn't happen again.